Hey friends, before we get into the thick of this video, I'd like to ask that you follow me on Twitch if you are interested. We're always having tons of fun goofing off over there, playing Halo, Fall Guys, etc, etc. And I'm trying to get into streaming as like a big thing as well. Uh, if you guys want to support me, just go ahead and follow me at twitch.tv slash jarosunder. There will be a link in the description. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop annoying you guys now. On to the video! If you asked me what my favorite thing to do in Halo was, I'd never be able to give a straight answer. It's a tough question, because Halo has such a diverse palette of options to choose from. But there's one thing that almost always comes into play with whatever I decide to do. Can you guess? I just showcased it in each clip I showed. Hint. It's, uh... It's in the title. I'm talking, of course, about... Physics, baby! Having been someone who essentially grew up on Halo, What's interesting is that Halo was basically my physics class. I've spent hours just playing around in Forge with gravity lifts and traffic cones, building vehicle courses and whatnot. Not the most holistic of classes, but I really did come to understand how physics works in a really strange way. One thing that's for sure, a warthog in motion definitely tends to stay in motion. Something often unmentioned about Combat Evolved is the fact that it actually has its own custom physics engine. Bungie actually designed one for the game that was a bit, um, interesting. But physics wasn't really something you'd see implemented in games all that much, so the prioritization of it was cool. The way you could bounce grenades around or you could shoot a map weapon and make it spin, Warthog Wars as my brother and I always called it, there was plenty of toys to play around with. And we're spoiled nowadays because we just wouldn't bat an eye at something like that anymore. But innovation always carries forward, and that means naturally that Halo 2 would get even more focus on physics. The difference was that now, Bungie was utilizing the Havoc engine, the leader in that field. These guys did really cool stuff, and now all of a sudden vehicles had a much more realistic weight to them. They wouldn't just slide around or defy the way physics is meant to behave. Not only that, but you could take this engine to do things it wasn't even meant to do. Sword cancelling, super bounces, using super bounces for trick jumps, the works. Such a blast to do. But then, the renaissance. Halo 3 saw not only a significant physics upgrade, it saw a map editor introduced in the form of Forge. Suddenly, not only could we play around with physics, we could create dominoes or Rube Goldberg devices, or you could, oh, I don't know, float people on teleporters with objects with physical properties, just have someone fling stuff at you and the platforms you stand on to try and knock you down. One of my favorite things to do in Halo 3 when I was a kid was just so simple. We'd set the parameters for our damage to zero, and then we'd have two infected chase a person around on a mongoose in Valhalla with a gravity hammer low gravity and high speed. The only way you could actually kill someone was just by splattering them against something at high speed. The ragdoll physics of the Spartans and Elites in multiplayer was incredible. They flopped around upon death and I loved it. It was really satisfying getting kills and watching people tumble wherever their inertia had them going. Halo Reach came out and gave us even more toys to tinker with, with a bigger forge palette and phasing objects. There was just more you could do with the physics in more situations. But eventually, Halo hit a ceiling. With Halo Reach essentially pushing the boundaries of what the Xbox 360 could do with the Halo engine, and the engine in the franchise being handed off to 343 Industries, it was officially time for some revisions. Where Bungie didn't necessarily push the envelope for graphics, they made up for in their level of detail. This obsession with bump mapping and weapon details and such meant that Halo was always nice to look at on a more granular level. But when the new guy's running the show, they don't exactly know what the old guy prioritized, or care for that matter. I'm not inferring that 343 didn't care, I don't know anything about the development of Halo 4, so I won't presume to. The point of all this isn't to say that Halo 4 didn't do anything for physics, but that it did less. Suddenly your multiplayer Spartans had this awkward fixed falling animation, an extremely heavy body. The vehicles in the game were far more squishy and essentially de-incentivized to use as a result. Not to mention, the simulation of physics and objects was just not approved upon in any way. The main thing that Halo 4 managed to do, which I thought was rather nice, was implement those gravity trait zones that allowed you to choose the gravity in a particular area, whether it be for a vehicle or for a player. To me, the reason why Forge was always the star of the show was simply because it displayed that simulation so well. 
It did everything in its power to give you more and more options to tinker around with, and Halo 4 didn't really add any objects to mess around with. Halo 5's Forge was just a thing of beauty. I don't think there's any disputing that. The problem with Halo 5 was its complete abandonment of vehicles in Arena Multiplayer. No big team battle or anything at launch. So those classic clashes of vehicles were left to Warzone, which was a pay-to-win multiplayer component that not everyone was interested in playing. The only criticism of Halo 5's Forge was again a lack of focus on physics interactivity, and more of a focus on map making. It's clear that the community wanted the ability to create maps, and I commend 343 for following through with that, but I'd like to see a balance struck where I'm given a tool that allows me to make the most of Halo's physics sandbox and push it to the limit. We're once again left to discuss the road ahead and what we can hope to see from it. I've analyzed Halo Infinite's campaign reveal trailer to find evidence of solid physics simulation, but it's really just difficult to tell with that much of a surface level look. I truly hope that we see a return to form and get some amazing and even groundbreaking physics simulation this time around, and can see evidence in the initial Slipspace reveal trailer, as well as the Discover Hope trailer pointing us towards that. We need to see more, and I hope we do soon. Hey guys, again, I'm going to go ahead and say the thing I always say. Thank you guys so much for supporting me here. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out watching these videos all the time. I can't stress this enough. Uh, you're probably getting tired of me saying it, honestly. But I just, I want you guys to know that I do care. And I listen to the things that you say. And I take everything very seriously. I, I appreciate you guys giving me this platform here. Um, hey guys, I want you guys to join the Discord, okay? If you guys enjoy the Halo community and you want to take part in it, uh, we have a pretty big community of almost a thousand people on my Discord by now who are always running customs, who are always talking about Halo, we're posting art, showing our gaming setups and stuff. We just have a really nice community of people that we're always having fun spitballing and playing and playing around with. You know, we do custom games every Wednesday. We do uh, customs night. Speaking of which, customs night is going to be this Wednesday uh, starting at 5 o'clock. We're going to go from 5 to 9, console comes first and PC is second, so 5 to 7 console, 7 to 9 PC. Um, I mean, that's really, really the gist of that. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you so much. I want to give a big, huge thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Nuck and Futz is our newest member with the $1 tier. We've got Sovereign on there now as well with the $1 tier. We've got Sticks with the $5 tier, Tees with the $10 tier, Ryan McCann with the $15 tier. Ghost Warrior with the $5 tier, Screamy with the $10 tier, Rye with the $5 tier, Reclaimer with the $10 tier, Anthony Berry with the $5 tier, Colton Pack with the $5 tier as well. Thank you guys so much. And again, uh, please check me out on Twitch, guys. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start doing face cam when I get to 500 followers over there. And I've been having so much fun streaming with you guys. It's been so, so, so fun. So if you guys get a chance, please, please check out my Twitch. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.